Welcome, welcome, welcome to Sunday School on the Go. This is your host, Prophetess Denise Kelly. Uh, we are starting with another awesome word. Uh, but this morning, we're going to uh, start it out by listening to Yolanda Adams, Open Your Heart. The title of the lesson today is Open Your Eyes. Favorite old songs, you know, we don't 
we don't have those ballads like that much anymore. You know, we yes. got we moving, shaking and moving, and I like shaking and moving too. So don't, let me let me not get it twisted. But every now and then mm -hmm. you just need something that's gonna reach down in your soul and just turn it a little bit. If you know what I'm saying, you know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's just the two of us right now. So we are gonna go ahead. It's and okay. We're going to get it started. Well, there's Philip Moore in his name. That's where he is. Amen. He said, well, two of you are gathered. That's right. So uh, we're going to get you to pray us in. Dear and Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for blessing us on this beautiful Mother's Day. Once again, I pray that you will bless our Sunday school and the teacher that's teaching us. Preach through her, Lord. Lord Jesus, I pray that everybody's doing just fine and let your will be done. Not ours. In your son's name, Jesus Christ, amen. Amen, amen, amen. So the title of the word today, the title of the Sunday School lesson is Open Your Eyes. From the scripture of opening your, the eyes of my heart, Lord. So we will be, I, I had to uh, decide between playing that song or when this song came up in, but I was like, oh, <laughs> I got to play this one in. And maybe we'll play that other one another day. So let's start with the prophecy. You know, today is the fifth, which is the meaning, which means grace. Uh, it is the eighth, which is the number of new beginnings. And of course, this entire year is the year of fruitfulness. So let me share what God shared with me. And it's a little bit long, longer than normal. So, um, so it's the prophecy of today is today is a day that represents new beginnings. What does that mean exactly? Well, I believe God is reminding us that each day we have is a new beginning. The Bible talks about God's mercy being new every morning. That concept alone is enough to rejoice. What, what, what do we need to be new in our lives? New or renewed love? New or renewed peace and joy? New or renewed perspective on life, jobs, family, business, relationships. God gives us a chance every morning to take new or renewed looks at our lives. Let us be fruitful in the newness God gives us each morning. Prophesy to yourself. Old things are passed away. And I will be a new creature in Christ today. So the scriptures are coming from Lamentations 3 and 23, the ones for the prophecy, and then uh, 2 Corinthians 5 and 17. But I want to talk about also the other part of the prophecy is the dream that I had. So I had this dream, and um, we, like everybody that's connected to, the, to this Bible study, were walking on rivers and seas of currency. Month. <laughs> and what? God said, hey, I'm about to blow y'all's mind. I'm going to mm -hmm. bless you so. It's going to be on that. You're not, you're going to know it's me that did it. He's about to give us uh, health and wealth in our lives. Thank if you. God can trust you, you will receive bountifully this year. Each month, and some of us will receive it on a weekly basis. Yes. I say, what? Glory. What, God? Are you serious? He said, it's going to be so much. You're gonna come it's going to be room. You ain't going to have room enough to receive it. Amen? Amen. So, open your eyes. That's the, that's the name of the lesson today. Open your eyes. And oh, so... Um, we're going to start out. I'm going to, uh, so open. Oh my God. There's so many definitions of open. So I'm like, <laughs> I don't know if I should read all these let, uh, definitions of open, but I'm going to point out five definitions that I think apply to us today. Okay. And one of them is it is free to be entered or used. Number one. The other one that I want to use is free from legal or discriminatory restrictions. Free from restrictions. 
Oh. The other one I want to say is Frank or Candace. And then the other one is not close to new ideas. I don't know how many I said, but that's all the ones I'm going to talk about today. And so mm -hmm. to be open, we have to be able to be able to receive new ideas. And when I say new ideas, my little old thing keeps popping up today. I don't know. I probably should have just wore it. You <laughs> know. <laughs> uh, so uh, uh, basically, God is trying to get us to see that we need to be open. And when I say new ideas, it's not, uh, we do need to be open to new ideas that we're not used to. But I'm talking about what God is doing in the scripture that we might not necessarily understand or get grasped. So it would be new, a new learning to us. When I read the Bible, each day I get something new out of it. I can read the same scripture. See, we get caught up in, oh, I got to know all these scriptures. But really, each time you read, God gives you a new revelation where you're at at that point. And so that's good enough for me. Um, and so as God begins to reveal the scriptures to you, he wants you to open your eyes. Now, he also is explaining to me, not only does, let me get some of these scriptures in first. Uh, so let me look at eyes. I, I started getting caught. Let me, let me go back. Okay. So eyes is obviously an organ, organ of sight. Yeah, like eyeball, iris, or the, the part around the eyes. Uh, sight or vision, to glance at or to look at, to pay attention to uh, or to observe. And here's the powerful one right here. The power of judgment by eyesight or opinion. Wow. You know, we heard uh, the eyes are the window to the soul. We hear that all the time. What exactly mm -hmm. does that mean? So when you think of that, when I when I say to you the eyes are the windows to the soul, and, I, and we got a scripture to back it up, what do you think that actually means? Talk to me. Actually, I believe uh, me myself personally is that um, when you look in a person's eyes, you can tell uh, pretty much what they're thinking. Well, that's one of my gifts. I can tell when you're sick. I can tell when you mean me no good. I can, you know, it just depends on what you mean because when you look into a person's eyes some people's eyes are so beautiful that we oftentimes fall into that instead of looking into their soul to see where their heart is and that's what i love about god he don't care some of us he took a little bit more time to make than others but it don't mean just because they look good on the outside or their eyes are beautiful that they have a beautiful soul so i'm not exactly sure all of that was good Thank you. all of that was good so let's go to, we're going to start with Psalms. I'm going to let Psalms be our first scripture. So 108, 19 of Psalms. So we're going to start there. We're going to be skipping around a little bit, uh, okay. but I want us to start there. Uh, it is a good scripture. So I'm going to ask you, let's see. Let me pull it up so I can make sure that I have it. Um I think we just 119. Uh -huh, 119. We're going to start at verse 18. Okay. And then just kind of read, and then um, I think we're only going to read eight verses. The actual scriptures that uh, God gave me was to 36, but I don't think we're going to read that. So let's read the first eight verses. Okay. So open my eyes that I may see wonderful things. Just a minute, it just only gave me a portion. <laughs> Open my eyes that I may see wonderful things in your law. I am a stranger on earth. Do not hide your commands from me. My soul is consumed with longing for your laws at all times. You rebuke the arrogant who are accused, those who stray from your commands. You remove from me their scorn and contempt, for I keep your statutes. Though rulers sit together and slander me, your servant will meditate on your decrees. Your statutes are my delight. They are my counselors. I am laid low in the dust. Preserve my life according to your word. You want me to go where, sis? 
Go ahead, uh, read the next one. Okay, I gave an account of my ways and you answered me. Teach me your decrees. Amen, amen. It goes on and on and, and, and basically what they're saying right there is open my eyes. That's the first part he says in the scripture. Yeah. He says, open my eyes that I may be able to do these things, that I may be able to understand because see, sometimes we don't have an understanding. And so right. let's let's look at some of the things he asked about the the wonderful things of your law. I want to understand the scripture so much that I can walk it out without even uh, thinking about. It. I want to give an account for my life according to the word of God. Now, see, there's laws in the world where we got to give an account, but we think to want we want to give an account according to the law. And then he says, don't hide the commandments for it. Because sometimes when you read the scriptures, if you ever notice it, sometimes when you read the scriptures, you just you don't understand them. You don't, you don't get it. You know, because God has to reveal it to you. And that's why sometimes when people read, they can't get an understanding. They, they're just reading. And, and, and even if you look at, remember when Philip met the man, the, uh, the eunuch man, um, and how he couldn't, uh, he said, how can I know? Except someone explained it to me. Mm -hmm. You know, but God has given us the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, for us to understand the word of God if we ask him. And so then he begins to talk about how the scriptures, I mean, and I, this is what God was sharing with me, that the scriptures actually break up that light, that, that soulish part of us, that part of us that, that uh, is still attached to the world. The scriptures do that. And then so he wants us to, to dive into the word of God. Open our eyes. Open my eyes is what he says. So that we can understand according to your will and purpose for our lives. Amen. 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 So let's look at the next big script. Well, let's look at a couple of little scriptures. So 2 Kings 6 and um, 17. Let's look at that. 2 Kings 6 and 17. So I like she's still getting ready, so I'm gonna go ahead and read it myself. Okay. Um, and Elisha prayed. This is a, a King James Version. And Elisha prayed and said, "Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see." And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw. And behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. Mm, glory to God. This. Is a story about Elisha having, uh, you know, they were back getting ready to uh, go up against, I want to say it's the Philistines at this point. But basically, it was a lot of them, and it was just the two. And so Elisha was trying to get him to see in the spirit realm. Because, see, our eyes need to be spiritually open. So that's really what I'm talking about. I'm talking about our eyes being spiritually open. Because everything that we see physically and in the natural is not always the true thing that is supposed to be. Just like we know that sometimes people can act like our friends. I love my frenemies, my frenemies, frenemies. I love them. You know why? Because that means that I'm doing something right. Mm -hmm. I'm doing what God has called me to do. And so he wants us to be able to spiritually discern things, to, to open our spiritual eyes that we may be able to see what God is doing in the earth. And, and, and right now, I feel like, and I see, or I have seen in the past, that sometimes we walk around with our eyes closed. There was a movie that came out, and it was a little boy, and I think he said, Awake was the name of the movie. But basically, he had been walking around sleeping. And then one day, his eyes opened up, and he began to experience or understand what was really going on. So he had been walking around asleep. I believe that many times as Christians, and in, in, in some still are, walk around.
down sleep for years before they actually open up their eyes and see what God is doing. And when you walk around sleep, see, see, the Bible requires us not to just see the word, but he said by hearing. We hear it. So people that are in church and they don't fell asleep, they still accountable for the word they heard. <laughs> so imagine that. We're accountable for the word that we hear. That's why a lot of times people should read the scriptures out loud. There's something about hearing the word of God that, that drops down into your spirit. And I'm not saying that reading doesn't do the same thing, but when you hear it, 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 it makes a difference. It, it connects with you spiritually. It gives you a, a earning in your spirit. Amen. 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 So he opened his eyes and he was able to see what God was doing. He was able to see that there were much more than just the two of them. There was angels around each and every soldier that was about to attack. Wow, that's amazing. That's what I say. That's what I'm talking about when I say open your eye. That's what I mean when I say open your eye. So let's look at Matthew. Matthew 6 and 22. Matthew 6 and 22. Let's look at Matthew 6 and 22. Oh, brother man looking sharp. Well, I'm looking sharp. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. You got that Bible scripture. You got that verse. Y'all still try to get this. Matthew um, 6 and 22. 6, 22. Yeah, read that. <laughs> Shana, you <laughs> got a picture, girl. Okay. You got it, Shana? Yes, I do. Um, the eye is the lamp of the body. If your eyes are healthy, your whole body will be full of light. Mm, go ahead and read 22, 23, and 24. Mm. Okay. So this well, is going to be good right here. Look at this. Go ahead. There it is. Huh? 23. Go ahead, uh, bro, if you got it. <laughs> Six, 622. No, I did 22. She won 23. 23 I'm sorry. I'm sorry. He said, uh, but if thy eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness. Amen? 25. No, no man can serve two masters, for either he will hate one and love the other or else he will hold to one and despise the other you cannot serve God in man mm. okay so that that actually opened up another can of worms which we're not going to talk about today <laughs> because really really I'm just talking about opening your eyes so that you can see what God is saying he said that the eyes, remember we talked about this earlier, Sean? The eyes are the window to the soul. He said that if light is in the eye, the whole body is whole mm, and full of light. But if dark, see, that's the part. If darkness is in the eye, ugh, the whole body is full of dark. So God is saying, I want you to begin to look at the scriptures and I want you to begin to discern what I'm saying to the body of Christ right now. Oh, that's that beautiful. Oh, my that's God. That's just beautiful now. That's just beautiful. That's that beautiful. That beautiful. Okay. All right. Let me, <laughs> let me get on uh, to the next scripture. Okay. So uh, let's read at. No, let's. I'm going to finish it out because. Yeah, let me finish it out. Ephesians 1, 17 through 21. And I think it's only like five verses. So if I can get each one of us to read a verse. I don't know if Brother Vinoy can, can read or not. So I will ask. So we're looking at Ephesians 1. We're going to start at verse 17. 
Brother Vanoa, can you read for us too? <laughs> it's highlighted. <laughs> um, he's muted, so maybe he can't. Oh, so okay. everybody read two verses. Sean, uh, 17. Nessa started, Nessa started out. Go ahead, Vanoa. Okay, this is the NIV version. Okay, I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people. And what is the ex exceeding greatness of his power to us world? who believe according to the working of his mighty power, which he brought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in heavenly places. For above all rule and authority, power and dominion in every name that is invoked, not only in the present age, but also in one to come. And God placed all things under his feet and appointed him to be head, over everything for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who feels everything in every way. Amen. Amen. So let's break that down like really quickly. I mean, not really quickly. So when I say open your eyes, when I say open your eyes, which is the title of the lesson, the reason why I'm saying open your eyes is because we, the church, have been asleep. Not paying attention. Not praying, complaining, instead of lifting him up. So he says, if your eyes are open, he wants you to be enlightened. Open his eyes. He wants you to walk in the spirit of wisdom and revelation. In these two spirits. And what I mean by that is he wants us to know him so deeply, so explicitly through his word that we will walk and our eyes will be open and we'll see stuff. Not so that we can be afraid. I'm going to tell you a story. I'm going I'm to finish this out first. In us knowing him through revelation and power and wisdom and walking in his word like he told us to, in knowing him, it increases our chances of helping somebody else come to him. Our lives are a living example of scripture, or they should be. But if you don't have scripture in you, how can you walk out the word? You can't. You got to begin to dig deep in the word of God and get an understanding of what God wants you to do in the earth. We are his hands and his feet in the earth. God convicted me about being open your eyes. And you guys know I studied the word. You guys know that I'm doing the things of God. You got, Maybe y'all don't know that. But we're going to say y'all. We're going to say y'all. <laughs> so if he's convicting me, that means that there's some different things that God wants me to do as well. One of the things that uh, he was letting me know about was that <laughs> I've been hiding. Y'all didn't even know that, did you? I don't want to. I, I don't want to do anything. I just want to hide. I, I know he's coming to the forefront for us to do. And, and, and this, even this platform has has uh was was him pushing me he pushed me to do it he told me i need you to get the word out there because people are hurting in the building in the building in the in the synagogues they're hurting just like they were back in the day of jesus they knew the word but then you had the elite that was sitting on the sidelines Watching them, can you imagine? Knowing and having life in your hands, but you too selfish 
to give it to somebody else. Y'all not hearing me. You're not hearing me. But what I'm saying, hallelujah. We should be ashamed if we're not giving out the truth of God's word. We should feel some kind of way when our lives are not reflective of him. And the only way our lives can be reflective of him is if we get into the word. If we open our eyes to the pain and suffering of others. We in. Unless we do some major messing up. Which we can't do. You know. He calls out to the backslider. Yes, he does. I was one of them. But there's others that need to look at our lives. There's others. When God speaks to you, there's some people on this line that God has spoke to you and told you to say something and you didn't. I've done it. And it wasn't nothing major either. It wasn't like, uh, you going to come in the money. It wasn't nothing major. It was just, God bless you. You know, God loves you. Or whatever it was that he wanted you to say. Open your eyes. Stop walking around blind and do what God told you to do. This is a conviction for all of us. Yesterday I went to a function. I did not want to go. I was asked two weeks ago and when she first asked me, I know I heard God say, tell her, yeah. I waited a day. And I told her yes after a day. And people were there that have been God, God elevated me. I'm gonna put it that way. There were people that were there that only see one side of me. The Psalmsters. But God opened up that door and said, No, nah, that's not gonna let you do that. I want you to do something else. So I'm saying that to say this. Our road ahead is to be fruitful. If we're going to be walking on rivers of money and river and seas of money that God has promised us this year. And you guys go back and listen to the beginning because I, the prophecy and the dream that I had uh, uh, about us being prosperous more than we could ever imagine. Anyway, so so let me kind of finish off this and then I'm going to open it up for comments. we got like about eight minutes. So what I believe God is saying to us as a, as a church, as a body of Christ, as believers, is that we got to open our eyes. We got to listen to the voice of God and we need to get into our word. And most of us are already getting into our word, but sometimes we're not even getting a full understanding of it. And we're so... Uh, <laughs> I'm, a, I'm not going to go there. I just heard God say, and, but we're so full of ourselves, we won't even ask for understanding. Uh, him, asking him, I'm saying. Not necessarily, you don't have to call anybody, but just ask him to show you. And he will. This platform, God has opened the door for us to be able to, like on Wednesdays, we can ask questions, we can do whatever we need to do. Even on Sundays, I don't have no problem putting it to the side and saying, hey, is there anything that God has laid upon your heart. And you guys know that that is true. So uh, I want you guys to talk. We got seven minutes. What does open your eyes mean to you? What did God speak to you and say? And this light, I got an extra light, y'all. I'm going to play with it while y'all talk. So, so y'all can see what this is a bless. My Mother's Day blessing from uh, just. So let me see what it got going on. So y'all might see some weird stuff. But go ahead and talk to me. Six minutes, y'all. It's ticking, ticking. I think of um, <laughs> just another way of saying don't be blind. Um, be awake to what's happening with, um, with yourself, with your family, um, with um, your relationship that you have that you're trying to have with the Lord, you know, those kind of things. And just 
be open to receive and to hear him and to be obedient to whatever he's telling you to do. Um, but definitely pay attention to what's happening within your own household, um, uh, with anything that you're involved in, whether it be work, um, your family, your children, all of that. Um, that's what I think about. Anybody else? Very sweet. <laughs> we can uh, also use this as when you say open your eyes. I want to <laughs> think also in the physical. Um, I'm learning, and you said a while ago about frenemies. We don't know how important our role is in life until your enemy. It don't be your friend. It be your enemy that comes up, and he'll open the door for you, and you don't even know it. I was just listening to the pastor about the ripple effect. We are all like filthy rags. Just because we say, or we are saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost, don't mean that we're not still sinners. We're still walking in the flesh. So oftentimes, we as humans, um, I can speak on me, is that when he said the eyes, and that's the reason why he gave us two, was to look. And I'm starting to watch more. And as I watch and I'm praying, I'm seeing how God is not only blessing us with wealth, but he's blessing me through health, wealth, and everything. He also done already put me into overflow, and it's just the beginning of May. And that's with me paying everything and still got a credit score of 720. I know that's nothing but him. So therefore, me, myself, personally, when God sent me my kingdom spouse, he going to have to have more than me. I'm going to look forward to 800 and some credit score. I mean, maybe my criteria is up high, but see, now I know my worth. A lot of people didn't. They too busy looking at your past when God used that for you to be a blessing to somebody else to show them how he can bring up a nobody and turn them into somebody so he can get the glory. Amen. 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 <laughs> Brother Gary, since your eyes are not open, talk to him. <laughs> yeah. I was wrong, <laughs> bro. but now I'm fine. <laughs> I was blind, but now I see. See. <laughs> he is right. <laughs> <laughs> but but the girl wasn't on the on the line when I was talking about Sean how the people be in church and they be falling asleep but God only is account hold them accountable to the word they hear. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what about their conscience? Brother Benoit, speak to us. We got about three minutes, uh four minutes. <laughs> hmm. Okay, when the Lord said we uh open your eyes, uh that is a uh it's a little something different to me. Uh, open your eyes. I mean, because sometimes we have to realize what we're looking at in the physical is not necessarily what's the important. Or sometimes we can look at the physical and get lost in some things that are uh, baffling us or bothering us. But we have to know and understand that, uh, you know, we're talking. I'm talking about your spiritual eyes, so to speak. Versus your physical, because uh, there's a lot, a lot of things that are going on that we can attribute to the physical or to a person or whatever you may want to call it. And when it actually is a the work of the enemy trying to uh, do what he can to topple you or to distract you or uh, and things of that nature. Uh, and when you look at it from a spiritual aspect. I mean, it's a lot easier to stay focused on the task at hand, um, which is, you know, really the spreading of his word is, I mean, that's foremost, foremost important. And also, um, just not being duped by the enemy, you know, uh, because uh, he uses our senses, physical senses, to... Uh, like trick is in essence, I guess you could call it that. Mm -hmm. You know, um, how, that's how we get caught up in the complaining, and that's how we get caught up in, uh, uh, you know, being pressed in, in a certain direction because of what we see. Like the children of Israel, when they were coming into the land, you know, they heard, got the promises, the spiritual promises, and they came back bearing grapes. I mean, they came back bearing so many grapes that. You know, they had to use a whole beam just to carry them. Everything God said that he that he's going to do, he saw it, but also you are breaking.
looking up really Stop bad, bro. the Giants in the light. You know, Chapter, uh, first you take the heat. Oh, all right, I can't. I, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so open, open your eyes. Is, you know, so we're able to, you know what I mean, really get out of the the day-to-day, uh, what you call it, the, I guess it's the, not the system. I, mean, I guess, you know, just the regular routine of the day. Right. Versus, you know what I mean, Hey, wake it up. See what's really going on in this world. And they get, so just get to about the kingdom business, as it, so, so to speak. Right, right. Okay, I'm going to pray us out because we probably only have a, a less than a minute. Uh, next time I'll give you guys more time. I apologize to the party right back because we on Sunday. So, Father God, in the name of Jesus, I just pray over each and every one of us, Lord God. I pray over every one of these millionaires. Lord God, that you continue to bless them both spiritually as well as naturally, that they will open their eyes and then open the eyes of their family. Give us, I give you the glory, the honor, and the praise for your word, Lord God. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen.